my end cabin inspection. My seatbelt is properly mounted and secured. No rips, tours, tears, or cuts. And it latches in and it latches out. And then after that, I would check my fire extinguisher, which is properly mounted and secured in the back of the cabin. It's up to date, fully charged, and pin is in place. My spare fuses and three red reflective triangles are also are also properly mounted secured in the back of the cabin. They're undamaged and ready to go. My city horn works and my air horn works. And then uh, after that, I would perform a safe start. I would make sure that I'm in neutral. My brakes are engaged. I would go ahead and turn the key to the on position. And I would be checking to see my ABS light, to see if it's on, and it should turn off in a little bit, it turns off, so that indicates that my ABS system is working. And then after that, I would perform a safe start by engaging the clutch, turning the vehicle on, and disengaging the clutch. Okay, after that, I would check my mirrors, which are properly mounted secured, not no chips, cracks, clean and it's adjusted to me. After that I'll check my windshield. Probably not as secured. No chips or cracks. It's clean and there's no obstructions or illegal stickers. And then I would check my wall wiper blades. They're probably not as secured, not cracked anything or broken. The rubber isn't ripped or torn. And then I would also check my uh, wiper fluid, which is probably working, and it's working in conjunction with my wiper fluid to clean the windshield. After that, I would uh, check my defroster and heater, which is my heater is working, and my defroster is also working. Okay. After that, I would. Uh, Display my indicators. I got my left turn signal, my right turn signal, my high beams, and my hazards. They are all probably working. Okay, after that, I'll check my gauges, my oil gauge should be between the range of 20 to 80 psi, and right now it's sitting a little under 40 psi. So it's probably working. And my water temperature gauge should be between 160 to 200 degrees. And right now it's it's still sitting at 140, but I think the vehicle's just still warming up, so that's that's okay. And my what each one make sure you want Oh okay, okay. This is my oil gauge, and then this is my water temperature gauge. And after that my my def gauge should be at least one eighth full, and right now it's sitting a little over three quarters, so that's good. And then my voltmeter should be between 12 to 15 volts, and right now it's sitting a little over 14 volts, and that indicates that the alternator is charging. My air pressure gauges, primary and secondary. Uh, it should be between the governor cutoff of 120 to 140 PSI. And right now it's sitting a little under, but that's okay because I'm going to, uh, I'm going to test my, uh, my brakes by building pressure to the governor cutoff of 120 140 PSI. I built the pressure to 120 140, and right now I will be begin to perform my pump test. I will test the parking brake, so I will push in the, uh, the red valve. 
I'm going to put it in the low gear, and I'm going to gently release the clutch so that way it tugs the truck. Okay, there we go. That was the parking brake. So I'm going to uh, engage uh, the trailer brakes, put it back in neutral, and then I'm going to charge uh, my KSI back up to 121.40 to cut off the brakes a couple times and then do my RPMs to around 1500 and then slowly charge the, the uh, air system. by pushing in the yellow valve and putting it in low gear, slowly releasing the clutch, waiting for it to tug. Okay, there we go. Got the tug. And now I will disengage both of my brakes, make sure they're both disengaged. I'll put it in low gear and then I would perform the uh, service brake test by slowly releasing the clutch and uh, braking, going a little around 5 miles per hour, there we go, brakes work, and there is no, uh, my steering wheel wasn't moving left or right as I was braking, okay, after that I will engage my brakes. Now I would perform a leak test by charging the air in my system to the governor cut off the 121 from the inside. <coughs> All right. And then, now that that's charged, I'm going to put it in, uh, I'm put it in low gear. I'm going to turn the engine off. And then I'm going to put it into the on position, and then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to disengage my brakes. Okay. After that, I will fully press on my brakes to stabilize the air in my in both primary and secondary air systems. Okay, it looks pretty stable right now. So now I will start my one minute timer. And after one minute, I will release the brake. And I should not lose more than four PSI within the system. And it appears that I did not lose more than four PSI in the system, so there is there are no leaks. Okay. After that, I would I would fan the brakes down to around sixty PSI, and the warning lights should come on. I'm testing the warning lights. Okay. There's one. And then there's two for both systems. I'm going to continue to fan the brakes down to test my spring brakes. Around 20 to 40 PSI, these valves should pop out and the spring brakes should engage. There's one. And then there's two. So my spring brakes are properly working. They 
have engaged. And now I will make sure I'm in neutral because I will perform a safe start. <coughs> and yes, okay, I will perform a safe start. Make sure I'm in neutral and my brakes are engaged. I'm going to engage the clutch, turn the engine on, and then uh, disengage the clutch. And that's a safe start. So I will build pressure back to 120 and 140 psi. Don't get cut off. Thank you.